Northern Ireland is a destination that often flies under the radar, but holds a treasure trove of experiences to be uncovered. From the vibrant city of Belfast to the captivating landscapes of Northern Ireland, I had the pleasure of visiting there earlier this year. I hopped a train from Dublin to Belfast without much of a plan and was pleasantly surprised with what I found. on breakfast and it actually looks really good. They give you this cute little thing with like butter and so all of this for seven euro fifty. It was only a two hour train and honestly I wish it was longer because I love trains. Okay I made it to Belfast and the first thing I noticed was lots of pretty ladies walking around everywhere and so I asked them where is everyone going all dressed up? And they said that the place to be is Cathedral Quarter. First though, I had to find my Airbnb. I booked a stay on the southern side of the city and it was $121 per night plus taxes, which was slightly less than my Airbnb in Dublin, which was $138 per night. I ended up being about a five or 10 minute Uber ride to town. This is my home for the next few days and I think it was only about a hundred dollars per night. Nice big apartment, one bedroom. The prices are definitely a lot lower in Belfast than they are in Dublin. And I'm just about five minutes from the center of town so super quiet area. But if I were to go back, I would probably stay right in the center where I could walk everywhere. On my first day in Northern Ireland, I explored the heart of Belfast, starting with the St. George's Market, which is open from Friday to Sunday from 8 to 10 a.m. until about 2 or 3 p.m. I got there a bit too late to eat, but I still really enjoyed walking around, chatting with some of the vendors, and perusing the selection of foods, trinkets, souvenirs, and antiques that you'll find there. We're so hungry right now. Dogs are also welcome inside the market, which I think is really nice. I got my dad some hot sauce because he loves hot sauce. And you're welcome, dad, because my luggage is already way too heavy to be adding hot sauce. But when in Northern Ireland, I ended up not getting anything because everyone was sold out since the market is almost closed. It's open Friday, Saturday, Sunday until 3 p.m. and I got here at like 2.30 so we struck out. But I'm gonna walk over to the Cathedral Quarter which is where all of the nightlife and lots of shops and restaurants are and so I'm sure I can find a bite to eat over there and check out the center of Belfast. Then I continued my walk towards the city center to see the main sites. Belfast is a must visit for history buffs, especially the iconic Titanic Quarter where the legendary ship was built. But unfortunately, the museum was closed while I was there, but you can check tickets and opening times at titanicbelfast.com. However, the weather was sunny and mild and I was able to walk around and take in the view from the bridge over the river Lagan and also from the top of the dome at Victoria Square. I'm hiking up a lot of stairs. Got my tour guide here. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. We made it to the top. If you go to Belfast, a highlight is strolling around the famous Cathedral Quarter with its cobblestone streets lined with charming cafes, galleries, bars, and street art. This area is a hub of life and creativity and a great place to soak up the vibes. Everyone's super nice here and it is very quiet. It's very pleasant and I'm liking it. It's also an ideal place to stop for a pint 
or a meal. Since I don't drink alcohol anymore, I enjoyed some tea instead of a beer, but I did indulge in a burger and fries at a local pub. On this day, I was out and about interviewing the local people about what it's like living in Belfast, and you can watch that video linked in the card on the upper right here or down in the video description. During my walk, I met a musician on the sidewalk who invited me to a local music night at a pub. Members of the community casually getting together to play traditional music is a very important part of the culture in both the Republic of Ireland Ireland and Northern Ireland alike. I met so many friendly people and the energy was so positive and happy and quite cozy. It was good fun or a great crack as the locals would say. I didn't want to leave. One thing to do in Belfast is to visit the murals and peace walls, which stand as a powerful reminder of the city's troubled past. You can join a local guided tour or take a taxi tour to get a deeper understanding of this city's transformation and the resilience of the people here, as well as some insights into the continued challenges and struggles. But there's also so much more to see outside of the city, so the next day, I decided to join a Game of Thrones tour to explore the northern coast. There are many different providers with similar tours, but the going rate for a full day tour is around 35 pounds, including your transportation, tour guide, and lunch. Our first stop was at the 800-year-old Carrick Fergus Castle, which is one of the best preserved medieval structures in Ireland. It was also used as an air raid shelter during World War II, and you can admire it from the outside, but it's also open every day from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m., so you can also go inside. Then we headed up one of Ireland's most picturesque drives, the Antrim Coast Road, a scenic route that extends for 80 miles of stunning coastline. Along the way, we stopped for a visit at the Cushenden Caves, which are 400 million year old caves that you might recognize as the Baratheon homeland in Game of Thrones. This is making me want to watch Game of Thrones again. <laughs> People were living in this area around 8,000 BC. It's hard to even comprehend. Visiting here is quite controversial, however, as the local residents are not so happy to have tourists and strangers trudging past their front door every day. So if you go, make sure to be quiet and respectful as you walk by from the parking lot to the beach and also be careful on the slippery rocks. This is so beautiful and definitely worth coming to. It's very serene and peaceful. After your visit, you can check out the village of Cushendal for a coffee, tea, or meal. Then it was time for lunch at a local hotel that also had a replica of the Game of Thrones throne in the lobby. Major bucket list goal happening right now. And even though I felt like a major tourist, I thoroughly enjoyed myself as I'm a huge fan of the show. After lunch, we headed towards the famous Giant's Causeway, Ireland's only UNESCO World Heritage Site and a geological phenomenon. It's a breathtaking site with tens of thousands of 50 to 60 million year old hexagonal basalt columns, which were either formed by ancient volcanic activity or giants whatever story you want to believe. Walking around here is quite surreal, except for all of the other tourists who will likely be accompanying you. I walked down from the parking lot at the top of the hill, although you can also take a shuttle to the bottom or go for a hike around the area. And there are also a few hotels nearby where you can stay the night. There's not many amenities here since we're actually just basically at the beach. There's a hotel and there is a visitor center, but it costs around 14 pounds just to go into the visitor center. I'm just gonna walk 
make sure to note that you do have to pay £13.50 to enter the gift shop unless you're a member of the UK's National Trust. It was really crowded the day I went, so I skipped it. After visiting the causeway, we passed by the Dunluce Castle in Bushmills, which is also known as the House of Greyjoy in Game of Thrones. We didn't have time to go in, unfortunately, but it was a beautiful view, and you can enter and explore the castle grounds for only six pounds. Now we're walking to the Dark Hedges, which is where the King's Road was in Game of Thrones. A lot of the trees have fallen down in the wind, but everyone loves a good tree-lined street. Lots of sounds of animals, so I can imagine at night it would be scary here. There's actually a hotel here, the Dark Hedges Hotel. So you can actually stay here and get a photo with no tourists. <laughs> Walking through the dark hedges was a great way to end the day. They make up this stunning avenue of beech trees that line both sides of the road. And I have to say, it was quite a bit of a spooky vibe there, especially at sunset. These trees were planted originally in the 18th century by the Stuart family who owned the nearby Grace Hill House estate. Over time, the trees have grown to form a natural tunnel-like archway, creating a really mesmerizing effect when you're walking or driving down the road. These trees are 300 years old. It's interesting to imagine what these trees have seen. If only trees could talk. Unfortunately, as with many destinations around the world, this site has become sensitive to over-tourism, so make sure to check local guidelines before you go. I hope that this preview of Northern Ireland has inspired you to add it to your travel list. Thanks for joining me on our adventures today, and click on the thumbnails to hear my interview with Belfast locals, and also subscribe if you're new here. Travel on, travel safe, and see you in the next video.